Hi, Bob. How were you guys able to overcome this? Well, eight of those came in that third quarter. You know, that was by far our worst quarter of the night um, for 11 points. You know, so the, the turnovers um, were, were not where we needed them to be. And that gave them life. That fueled their break. That gave them extra possessions. And you add that on top of the number of missed layups and dunks that we had. You know, that, that this game was... No disrespect to them. This game was closer than it should have been, in my opinion. Uh, I also thought a key stretch was the end of the second quarter. You know, we had built, I believe, uh, an 18-point lead, and uh, we just didn't close the half the right way. You know, we have to be better, uh, more focused, more disciplined, closing quarters, closing halves than we were. Um, you know, last year this team swept us. You know, I mean, forget records, forget whatever. They beat us three times last year, and for us to go four and zero against them this year, um, with a lot of guys out. I'm just proud of our guys, obviously, um, trying to get healthy. It was great to have Zeke Naji back playing. I thought he was effective in his minutes. And Nicola just was, you know, at another level once again. I mean, his scoring, rebounding, playmaking uh, was phenomenal. And I thought Monte Morris throughout the game, but especially down the stretch, uh, him and Nicole in that two-man game, Monte made some big, big plays. Seven of his 20 points came, I think, in the last probably three or four minutes of the game. So, uh, we'll take it. Obviously, we're going to get home around 3 o'clock in the morning and uh, try to get another one tomorrow night at home against uh, Golden State. But really proud of how well we're playing as as of late. Some of those Nicole baskets in the fourth quarter, I mean, just like swirling and twirling. Like, do you think he's improvising in, in real time? Have you ever seen anybody, you know, have you seen him practice those shots? No, we don't practice anymore, man. Okay. <laughs> um, well, no, he, he just realizes that he's generating so much attention. So the moves where he'll catch, face, shot, fake, drive, spin, shot, fake, step through, shot, fake, drive, step through again, and scoop layup. We've seen it before, and he, he almost has a, a, a sense where the defender is, when to use that shot, fake, when to score right away. And he's set the tone from Jump Street. That's what I liked about tonight. You know, uh, a few games ago against New Orleans, he kind of played and waited to take over. First quarter, he set the tone right away. I'm going to dominate this game, and he did. You know, it's funny, you know, we, we were, uh, we came over to shoot this morning and, you know, I, I told Monte, I said, you know, how you doing? And, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I just got to make shots. I said, Monte, did you realize how well you're playing and, you, and your numbers in the last 13 games were 11 and two, like you're shooting the ball lights out. You know, the three he made going into the break against Golden State, the three coming out of the break against this very Sacramento team, like Monte's efficiency has just been off the charts. Um, and, and as the season's gone along, as you mentioned, um, we used to have Jamal Murray and Nicole Jokic, which were, you know, like almost unguardable, one of the best two-man end-of-game tandems in the league. And obviously, you know, uh, Monte's his own player. He's not Jamal. And, uh, but him and Nicola have the same kind of impact. We take our time, we get set, we space the floor, we read the defense, and he knows that Nicole is going to garner so much attention. He's got to keep the defense honest. He's got to be willing to drive and finish, driving kick to Austin for a huge three tonight late in the game, shoot the little pull-up jumper, or if they do come over to help, that little pocket pass to Nicola where he's just money in that position. So uh, I'm really proud of Monte. You know, he's eight of 11, two of three tonight. Uh, 20 points, four rebounds, four assists. Just a, and, and he had a hell of a defensive player in Davion Mitchell draped all over him. And then they eventually put Harrison Barnes on him to get more size. So that, that's also a sign of respect of who they're putting on Monte. You know, keep your efficiency the last 13 games. How much of his mid-range game, that floater, is a product of, of teams collapsing on him on the three-point line because he's you know, been so efficient from there? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a part of it because he is shooting lights out from three. Um, and he's always been a very good mid-range shooter. It's really tough because analytically, they're going to tell you the mid-range shot's the worst shot in the game. But we have some really good mid-range shooters. Nicole is one of the best in the league. Jamal Murray is great in the mid-range. And Monte Morris is also very proficient shooting that mid-range shot. So you don't want to rely on it. You don't want to take the mid-range shot with 18 on the shot clock. But as the clock works down, I just want open shots. And we generate a ton of open shots. And Monte's really good from three, 
for mid range and even finishing out the basket. If uh, you would have known you have a chance to go four and oh into four and five, what would you say? Well, I, I, I yeah, no, I, I believe it. I mean, because, you know, just of how well we've played. You know, I reminded our players today, I said, fellas, watch our record in our last 13 games. And, and no one knew we were 11 and two. And I didn't think they would. I go, well, we're 11 and two. More importantly, let's talk about why. You know, I, le I learned that from Jeff Van Gundy years ago. Understand why you're winning, understand why you're losing. We are now 12 and two because our defense is top three in the NBA, our offense is top seven in the NBA. We shared the ball. We had 26 more assists tonight. We rebound the basketball. We only gave up eight offensive rebounds tonight. So um, just understanding it and, and hopefully, you know, as we move forward, I think 16 games to go, we can, we can find ways to continue to play at the same level we've been playing at. One more. So I wonder if there's a little bit of charm in, in knowing that your guys didn't necessarily know the record just because they're, they're laser focused on the next game, on this day, on grinding out what they need to grind out. You could look at it that way. <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not. No, you could. I mean, uh, I, I mean, you don't play as well as we've played without being like laser focused to your point, Dems. Like our guys understand the t what time it is. You know what I mean? Like we understand what time it is right now in the season. Um, and, and this is when you want to be playing your best basketball. Um, I also wonder if, you know, uh, they didn't know we're 11 and two because they're so locked in or because they just, they're just hooping. Like there's a there's a feel good atmosphere in the locker room, and that's my job to make sure they understand. Hey, we are 11 and two. Now we're 12 and two, and to tell them why. But as long as they go out there and they do it every night, uh, that that's all really that matters. And uh, once again, last thing I want to I want to make sure I give Uncle Jeff Green, uh, his wife Stephanie, a huge shout out. They welcomed a a beautiful baby girl. Uh, I believe her name is Sarai. Hope I didn't mess that up, Unc. Uh, I'll do a couple of sprints if I did, but congratulations to Uncle Jeff and his family uh, and glad that everybody's doing well, happy and healthy. So this was for you, Unc. This was for you.